Ladies and gentlemen, the Blue Angels, the Navy's Precision Flight Demonstration Squadron, will be approaching momentarily behind me. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite all our guests to remain standing for our national anthem, sung by Midshipman First Class Scott Serrato, and the invocation by Captain Francis Foley, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2018 asks that we pause for a moment of silence to recognize one member of the class who is not with us today, Midshipman Juan Jimmy Jimenez, who sadly passed away before this auspicious day. Please join now in a moment of silence as we remember him and honor his family. Ladies and gentlemen, according to your custom, I invite all who wish to join with me. Let us pray. Eternal Father, rejoicing in the abundant blessings you bestow on us all, we turn to you with confidence. We give thanks for the skill, commitment, and spirit of generosity with which you endow the men and women who freely don the uniform of their nation. Pour forth on the class of 2018 all the courage, wisdom, and strength they need in crisis and in calm. In the storms of life, make them steadfast. In face of obstacles, unstoppable. In combat, invincible. And in success, humble and grateful. Bless their families and those who have supported them in life's journey. Reward all who have helped them to grow by good example and sage counsel. Lord, guide those to be commissioned to be leaders of integrity, honor, and consummate ability on land and sea and in the air. Wherever they are sent, may they be instruments of freedom justice, and peace. Finally, Lord, bless the United States of America. Keep her safe. Grant peace among all nations and amidst all factions. But until that great day of healing and universal harmony, keep our Marine Corps and Navy strong, sharp, and skilled, feared by their foes, 
loved by their friends, and forever treasured in the hearts of their countrymen. In your most holy name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 62nd Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy, Vice Admiral Walter E. Carter, Jr. Mr. President, Under Secretary Modley, Admiral Richardson, General Walters, Congressman Whitman, Senator Wicker, all the members of Congress here today, Ambassador Bolton, and the 30 ambassadors from our friends and allies from all over the world, Brigade of Midshipmen, family, friends, faculty and staff, and most importantly, the men and women of the United States Naval Academy Class of 2018. What a glorious day. Welcome each and every one of you. The stadium is packed here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Some 30,000 are here today. As we think about today, I first want to give a special welcome to the class of 1968. The class of 1968 represents the 50-year link in the chain connected in mentoring, advising, and inspiring the class of 2018. The class of 1968 joined our Navy at a, at a tough time, leading us through the Vietnam War, the Cold War, Desert Storm, and beyond. They produced two Chiefs of Naval Operations, a Commandant of the Marine Corps, a Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a Secretary of the Navy, a Senator, astronauts, and the Administrator of NASA. They represent the very best of our Naval Academy alumni, known as the Long Blue Line. They represent the epitome of reaching the highest levels of responsibility in command, citizenship, and government. Let's welcome the class of 1968 back. As I look around this full stadium, we are packed with moms, dads, grandparents, brothers, sisters, nieces, cousins, loved ones, those who are here and those who are not here. This is your special day too. The love and support you have given to your midshipmen to get them to this day is a celebration for you. For you moms and dads, you will recall just a little under four years ago at the completion of your then plebes I day, I said simply thank you. Thank you for trusting our Naval Academy and taking care of your sons and daughters. Well, today is the culmination of that 47 month effort. And your love and support, as I told you four years ago, was you becoming part of the Naval Academy family. Well, today, you will still be a member of that Naval Academy family, but you're joining a bigger family, the family of the Navy Marine Corps team. So welcome aboard, moms and dads. We are proud to have you here with us today. <clears throat> to the class of 2018, uh, this is a little bit of a bittersweet day for me. I have seen you from the very beginning. I've been your superintendent for all four years. And I can't tell you, I've never been more proud to be a Naval officer than to see you finish here at the United States Naval Academy. You started out in Plebe summer, 1,191 of you. And amazingly, after that six and a half week grueling period, only nine of you quit. It's still a record in 173 year history of the Naval Academy, the smallest percentage of plebes to ever quit. In 
And today you are graduating well over 88% of your original class, one of the highest graduation rates in Naval Academy history. And through your time here, and through your time here, we have developed you morally, mentally, and physically. You have passed every test. We've instilled in you the ideals of duty, honor, and loyalty. But today, today you're about to take the oath of commission. And today is a day of transition and transformation. Because your Navy, your Marine Corps, and your nation are going to ask you to become men and women of action. And simply put, that means we need you to lead, fight, and win. Lead, fight, win. That's right, you can applaud that. That's what they're going to do. You will take care of your sailors and Marines. You will learn your profession of arms. And you will fight and win in preserving the peace and being victorious in high-intensity combat when directed by higher authority. But on a day like today, if we're looking for inspiration for that warfighter spirit that you're going to have, we don't have to look any further than someone that's been on the yard or our campus your entire 47 months. Captain John Paul Jones, arguably the father of our Navy, he lies in a crypt below our Naval Academy Chapel. In November 1778, he famously said, I wish to have no connection with any ship that will not sail fast, for I intend to go into harm's way. And he turned that intention into words of action. For less than a year later, on September 23, 1779, while in command of the USS Bonham Richard, a 44-ship frigate converted from a, a French merchant ship who was leading a small group of American flotilla ships in the North Sea, in a place called Flamborough Head, where he intercepted 40 British ships led by an escort, USS Serapis, commanded by Captain Richard Pearson. And what was one of the greatest come-from-behind victories in maritime warfare history, John Paul Jones proved himself victorious, proving our fledgling Navy was competent and capable. And his fighting spirit, where he famously said, at their hour of doom, I have not yet begun to fight is the very definition of who you are, class of 2018. You have learned that while you were here. You don't give up the ship, and you will fight to the end and lead, fight, win. Now, as I leave you, my final thought for you today is some lesser known words of John Paul Jones. They happened 241 years ago in the streets of Providence, Rhode Island in Boston, Massachusetts as he was recruiting sailors to go to sea with him. And I share these words with you because they are as relevant today as they were 241 years ago. Sign on, come sail with me. The stature of our homeland is no more than the measure of ourselves. Our job is to keep her free. Our will is to keep the torch of freedom burning for all. To this solemn purpose, we call on the young, the brave, the strong, and the free. Heed my call. Come to the sea. Come sail with me. 2018, sail on, lead, fight, win. Ladies and gentlemen, may God bless the young, the brave, the strong, the free, men and women of the United States Naval Academy class of 2018.
May God bless our Navy Marine Corps team and all those sailors and Marines who are standing the watch at this very moment on every ocean, on every sailing choke point, that we can enjoy the very freedoms that we enjoy here today. God bless them and God bless our United States of America. Thank you all very much. Go Navy! And now it's my pleasure to introduce a Naval Academy graduate from the great class of 1983, the 33rd Under Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Thomas B. Modley. Mr. President, members of Congress, Admiral Richardson, Vice Admiral Carter, distinguished guests, faculty, and staff of this national treasure of an institution, parents, families, and friends of the great class of 2018, thank you for being here to honor and celebrate this tremendous ac accomplishment, but more importantly, for putting your faith, hope, and prayers behind these young Navy and Marine Corps officers. Soon they will depart from this place to assume positions of massive responsibility defending our nation and contributing their intellect, passion, and skill to sustaining the most powerful and lethal maritime force the world has ever known and hopefully will ever know. Parents, Thank you for raising such outstanding citizens and sponsor families from Annapolis in this area. Thanks for picking up where those parents left off and opening your homes and providing comfort and support to this class over the last four years. <laughs> to the awesome class of 2018, Congratulations and relax. The hard part's mostly over, for today anyway. No more panic attacks when you hear the 10-minute chow calls. No more worrying about the quality of your tuck at restriction musters. No more sitting at your desks in Class A uniforms during room tours. No more cramming for final exams. No more alpha room inspection. You can cheer for any of these, by the way. And at least for you, ensigns, no more parade practices, parades, or platoon drill. Now, I'm very sorry, Marines, uh, but the joy of marching and parades that you all came to love in your four years here at the Academy is going to continue for you for many more years. But. I guarantee that your future parades will have a level of precision that you probably did not experience here. <laughs> Class of 2018, you will soon discover that life away from the academy will be very, very different. Just imagine, you now can learn what it is actually like to sleep under your covers rather than on top of them. You can also have an opportunity to expand on the passionate love of the ballet and opera that you developed during the Distinguished Artist Series at Alumni Hall. And perhaps most importantly, you will finally have the time and independence to prepare some of your favorite meals from King Hall in your own homes. Just think culinary expressions like mystery meatballs, King Hall meatloaf and kale wraps don't have to be distant fond memories. I recommend you contact the supply officer for more information on this, but please, no more death threats about kale wraps. But on to more serious matters, because that's what this day is about. It was 35 years ago on this very day, May 25th, that I was sitting where you are. And I walked across this very stage and received my diploma from the Secretary of the Navy 
the Honorable John Lehman. It was a time in history not unlike the one we are in today. After years of neglect and insufficient defense budgets, our Navy was just beginning to receive the huge shot in the arm that it required to face down the growing Soviet threat. The national resolve, inspired and embodied by President Reagan at that time, at the time of my commissioning, rebuilt our military, and most importantly, our Navy, so that the Soviet Union had no choice but to retreat and eventually collapse into the annals of its own inglorious past. In it, in its wake, came the liberation of millions of people and nations who suffered under communist oppression behind the Iron Curtain. One of those nations was Hungary, a place where my own father escaped in the late 1940s to flee Soviet-imposed tyranny. I recall this point in history to you today not because it's personal for me, but because of its relevance for you. Just as I was fortunate to serve under President Reagan, you should recognize how fortunate you are to be serving today under a Commander-in-Chief who believes what President Reagan believed, that our national security <laughs> that our national security should be guided by the clearest should be guided by the clearest of principles that principle is peace through strength this is not a political tagline it is a geopolitical truth it is particularly true for a nation such as the united states with our broad global interests and important friendships all around the world and our fundamental desire to see our people and the people of the world prosper under the guiding lights of individual liberty and human dignity. Weakness in pursuit of such lofty aspirations invites aggression and it always will. As you are commissioned today, be grateful that the American people through their elected representatives in Washington, from the President to the Congress, recognize this fact and have committed the resources to give you what you need to deter our adversaries or to dominate and defeat them if necessary. I can assure you, not every nation in the world stands up for its principles in this way, nor do they invest the resources to make it so. Second. Just as my classmates and I never saw the demise of the Soviet Union coming in 1983, you may also be surprised at the good that can come to the world through what you will be doing every single day as officers in the armed forces of the United States. You may not recognize this fully in the routine of your daily jobs, but as long as you lead and inspire a strong Navy and Marine Corps team, one that is prepared for any adversary I guarantee you that some significant and world-altering good will come of it over time. In fact, I am certain that as you look back on your own careers, no matter what direction they take, 35 years from now, just as I am doing nostalgically today, you will find that some symbol of oppression, not unlike the now extinct Soviet Red Star, will have been relegated to the dustbin of history because of what you did to sustain the strength and the lethality, lethality of the United States Navy and Marine Corps. It will happen because as we have learned through history, tyranny, tyranny and oppression cannot survive contact for long against a powerful military force, one that is anchored by a people and an officer corps of high moral, moral character. Officers who in addition to their courage also maintain a passion for peace and prosperity for all the citizens of the world. That is who you are. And the world you are entering today as officers in the United States military is going to be a much better place for it. In closing, let me say that although this is a truly great day in your lives, 
it is unlikely to be in the top 10 of your greatest days in uniform. Rather, you will find those greatest days and the moments when you see the people you have led, trained, educated, mentored, tutored, commanded, and yes, even reprimanded at times, perform well beyond your expectations. As officers in the United States military, you are given tremendous responsibility to respect and protect those placed under your command. The American people entrust you with their sons and daughters, and they place their security and the security of our nation in your hands. Do not expect to be loved by everyone for this, even though it may happen on occasion. As Secretary Mattis is fond of saying to all of us who are now honored to be serving in the Pentagon, quote, your job is to protect the nation. So I commend to you this following piece of advice to make this important and what you will find an often difficult job far easier on yourselves. That advice is this. Don't ever worry about being loved for what you do. Rather, love the country you are asked to defend. Love the Constitution you are about to pledge your lives to protect and defend. And most importantly, love the people you have been privileged to lead. Make sure they eat before you do. Care about their families as much as you do your own. Be vested in their successes more than your own inv individual accomplishments and nurture their careers more than you pursue your own advancement. Value their lives to the point that you will always consider their safety and security in every decision you make. And you will do this best by making sure they know how to fight and how to win. It is only through this level of servant leadership that you will maximize and empower those you will lead to meet the demands they face in this dynamic century. It will accrue tremendous personal satisfaction to you during your time of service. It will foster truly great moments that will make the elation you are feeling today seem almost trivial. This is the kind of satisfaction, the kind of job satisfaction, that only service and the armed forces of the United States of America can provide. So prepare yourselves to experience it over and over and over and to treasure it every single time. Officers of the class of 2018, you are embark about to embark on the journey of your lives. Your service is noble. Your service is just. Your ser service will make this country and the world a better place. Today, we thank you in advance for your leadership and the sacrifices each of you will make to keep us safe and free. And today, be assured, we love you. So I'm going to see if this works. Class of 2018, go Navy! Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, class of 2018, it is my great privilege to introduce our Commander-in-Chief and the 45th President of the United States, the Honorable Donald J. Trump. Hello, midshipmen, hello. <laughs> Great going. And let me say that to the entire brigade, please be at ease, enjoy yourselves, because we are all here to celebrate the amazing class of 2018. Amazing job. Thank you. Really something.
Admiral Carter, thank you for that wonderful introduction and for your leadership and the incredible job you've done at this storied academy. And thank you, Captain Chadwick, for your dedication and service. Thank you to Undersecretary Modley, Admiral Richardson, General Walker, for joining us today. Thanks also to Senator Wicker, Congressman Whitman, and Congressman Valedo. I want to recognize the entire brigade for a tremendous year. This has been a spectacular year for you. I've heard all about your achievements. And a very special recognition for the midshipmen, fourth class. You are plebes no more. To all of the distinguished faculty and staff, to the local sponsor families, and most importantly, to the parents and grandparents and family members who have helped our graduates reach this joyous hour, today is your incredible achievement also. They would have never made it without you. You know that. So I want to thank our midshipmen. I want to thank your families and thank you America thanks you more than anybody. You have done a spectacular job. Thank you very much. Finally, to the men and women about to be commissioned as ensigns in the Navy and second lieutenants in the Marine Corps, let me say on behalf of the entire nation, we could not be more proud of the United States Naval Academy, class of 2018. Thank you. Great job. Congratulations to you all. Four years ago, each of you made the most important decision of your lives. You chose the path of hard work, sweat, and sacrifice. You chose the life of honor, courage, and commitment. You chose to serve the nation and defend our great American flag. You chose the Navy, blue and gold. From the first moments of induction day through a grueling six weeks of plebe summer, you endured and you persevered. And then the rest of the brigade returned and the real test began. You developed morally, mentally, and physically. You poured yourselves into military tactics, seamanship, navigation, ethics, and engineering. And when hard work wasn't enough, like generations before you, you gathered your pennies and sought favor from the all-powerful Takumisha. All-powerful, a little bit different. Others worked hard for their demerits at McGarvey's and the Fleet Reserve Club. And so today, in keeping with tradition, I declare that all midshipmen on restriction for minor offenses, you are hereby absolved. That sounds like a lot of people. The Admiral will define exactly what that means. So, Admiral, please go easy, please. Okay, please go easy. It's a great group of people here, Admiral. I'm told that this class led Navy athletics to the highest win percentage in your 172-year history. Think of that. 
That includes taking the Army-Navy Star Series for the fourth straight year, a remarkable achievement in sport and athletics. Remarkable. And because you care about every contest against Army, for the record, this year, Navy beat Army 19 times. And I will not mention, I promised, who won the football game. I will not mention it. I won't mention it. I refuse to say it. But that is a great achievement. And let me take a guess. You're still not tired of winning. Winning is such a great feeling. Isn't it a great feeling? Winning is a great feeling. Nothing like winning. You've got to win. In every endeavor, the class of 2018 has shown its metal and it's proved its might. You have earned your place in that ancient league of sailors and shipmates, captains and commanders, warriors and mariners and marines. You crave adventure. Hello, folks back there. You chase discovery, and you never flinch in the eye of a raging storm. America is in your heart. The ocean is in your soul. The salt water runs through your veins. You live your life according to the final law of the Navy. The word impossible does not exist because Navy never quits. You don't give up, you don't give in, you don't back down, and you never surrender. Wherever you go, wherever you serve, wherever your mission takes you, you only have one word in mind, and that's victory. That's why you're here. Victory, very important word. You are now leaders in the most powerful and righteous force on the face of the planet, the United States military. And we are respected again, I can tell you that. We are respected again. A lot of things have happened. We're respected again. For the last four years, you have walked the same paths as Navy's greatest legends, the giants of Midway and Coral Sea and Manila Bay. Here in Annapolis, the glorious past is all around you, and so are the stories of your great heroes. One such hero who appears in the pages of your old yearbooks is Bruce Voorhees. You know Bruce Van Voorhees well-known all over. Bruce hailed from Nevada and was a member of the Naval Academy class of 1929. Beneath his picture, in the 1929 lucky bag, Bruce's classmates wrote that he spent most of his time teaching the city slickers from the east the correct pronunciation of Nevada. And I had to learn that, too, to win the state. <laughs> Great place. He saw studying as an unnecessary evil, and they remembered in three cruises and four years in blue surge, brass buttons, he left a trail of broken hearts extended the full length of both coasts and radiating for miles around Crabtown. In other words, he was just like you in many ways. Just like you, not a lot of difference. Just over a decade after his graduation, Lieutenant Commander Van Voorhees found himself at war. 
Seventy-five years ago this summer, he was in the South Pacific commanding Bomber Squadron 102 during the Battle of the Solomon Islands. That was a rough battle. His only brother had been killed in the Bataan Death March. On July 6th, Bruce volunteered for a mission to destroy a crucial enemy base. It was a rough time. It was a rough, tough situation. He knew full well that he would likely never return. He knew he was going to die. But he also knew his daring action could prevent a surprise attack on large-scale American forces. So his plane took off alone on a 700-mile flight. Bruce flew through the darkness to his target, a tiny speck on the vast open sea. He braved unrelenting anti-aircraft fire like nobody had ever seen at that time, and a trail of enemy planes to single-handedly destroy this large enemy base, including multiple fortifications and a critical communications link. And in this final act of valor, Bruce was caught in the blast of one of his own bombs and perished in a remote lagoon very far from here. His life was lost, but his legacy will live forever. Many of you have seen the star marking Bruce's old room at Bancroft Hall, commemorating his Congressional Medal of Honor, our highest honor. Some here today will trace his path to Pensacola to earn your wings. You may even make it all the way out to the legendary combat training school known as Top Gun in Bruce's beloved hometown in Fallon, Nevada. There you will have the honor to take flight from Van Voorhis Field and remember a hero who fought for his country and died for his homeland and saved so many lives with his bravery. Each of you inherits the legacy of the heroes who came before you. It's a living history passed down from officer to officer and generation to generation. Each of you will make your own mark on the Navy, the Marine Corps, the military, and the history of our great nation. Seize today, and you will shape tomorrow. In a few moments, you will be commissioned into the mightiest fighting forces of the air, the land, and the sea. Together, you will blast off carriers, of which we're just now finishing the largest aircraft carrier in the world, launch off submarines, of which we have many under construction, and ward off evil. You will bring comfort to our friends, and you will strike fear into the hearts of our enemies. Among our graduates today will be 283 naval aviators, 134 submariners, 256 surface warfare officers, 70 restricted line officers, and 15 explosive ordnance disposal officers, 236 United States Marines, 35 very tough, very well-conditioned 
Navy SEALs. Together you are the tip of the spear, the edge of the blade, and the front of the shield defending and protecting our great country. You know, there is no mission our pilots can't handle. There is no hill our Marines can't take. And there is no stronghold the SEALs can't breach. There is no sea the Navy can't brave, and there is no storm the American sailor can't conquer, because you know that together there is nothing Americans can't do, absolutely nothing. In recent years and even decades, too many people have forgotten that truth. They've forgotten that our ancestors trounced an empire, tamed a continent, and triumphed over the worst evils in history. In every generation, there have been cynics and critics who try to tear down America. It's not working too well lately. But in recent years, the problem grew worse. A growing number use their platforms to denigrate America's incredible heritage, challenge America's sovereignty, and weaken America's pride. But we know the truth, we will speak the truth, and we will defend that truth. America is the greatest fighting force for peace, justice, and freedom in the history of the world. And in case you haven't noticed, we have become a lot stronger lately. A lot. We are not going to apologize for America. We are going to stand up for America. No more apologies. We are going to stand up for our citizens. We are going to stand up for our values. And we are going to stand up for our men and women in uniform. Because we know that a nation must have pride in its history to have confidence in its future. We are the nation that built the highways, the railroads, the Empire State Building in one year, the Golden Gate Bridge, and we are the nation that built the Panama Canal. We trekked the mountains explored the oceans, and settled the vast frontier. We won two world wars, defeated communism and fascism, and put a man on the face of the moon. We cured disease, pioneered science, and produced timeless works of art that inspire the human soul and on distant islands, far away battlefields, above the skies and beneath the sea, the entire world has borne witness to the unstoppable strength, skill, and courage of the United States Navy and the American Marines. Each of you enters service at a truly exciting time for our country. For we are witnessing the great reawakening of the American spirit and of American might. We have rediscovered our identity, regained our stride, 
and we're proud again. Prosperity is booming at home. Our economy is the strongest it's ever been. And our country has regained the respect that we used to have long ago abroad. Yes, they're respecting us again. Yes, America is back. We have begun the great rebuilding of the United States military. We have ended the disastrous defense sequester. No money for the military. Those days are over. And we've just secured, you've read all about it, a $700 billion, largest ever amount of money to support our great war fighters. And I might add that next year, the $700 billion, not million, they like in the sound of million, but billion's better. The $700 billion goes to $716 billion, and we are going to be stronger than ever before. We will have the strongest military that we've ever had, and it won't even be close. And when did we need it more than now? That means new ships. You like that. We have now the lowest number of ships that we've had since World War I. And very soon, you're going to be up to 355 beautiful ships. 355. That's almost a couple of hundred more ships. So you're going to be around for a long time. We're not running out of equipment. We're not running out of ships. And that's been approved. And we are honored by it. We're going to have new equipment and well-deserved pay raises. We just got you a big pay raise. First time in 10 years. We got you a big pay increase, first time in over 10 years. I fought for you. That was the hardest one to get, but you never had a chance of losing. I represented you well. I represented you well. And this week, we passed the new landmark legislation to give more choice and better care to our great veterans. We're going to take care of our veterans. We're doing a great job with it. We are taking care, finally, after decades, we're taking care of our veterans. We passed VA accountability. Everybody said it couldn't be done. That's if you don't do a good job, you couldn't get fired. Now you don't do a good job, you don't take care of our vets. They look at you right in the eye, and they say, Jim, you're fired. Out. Out. You're fired. Get them out of there. They all said you couldn't get that. They tried to get it for 35 years. We just say, get him out of here. He doesn't take care of our vets. Next year, we're committing even more to our defenses, and we're committing even more to our veterans. Because we know that the best way to prevent war is to be fully prepared for war. And hopefully, we never have to use all of this beautiful, new, powerful equipment. But you know, you're less likely to have to use it if you have it and if you know how to work it. And there's nobody knows how to work it like you. And if a fight must come, there is no other alternative 
Victory, winning, beautiful words. But that's what it's all about. We are reestablishing the second fleet in the Atlantic, bigger, better, stronger than it's ever been before. We are rebuilding our defense industrial base to forge American iron, aluminum, and steel, which, by the way, we just put tariffs on when it comes in from other countries, okay? We're taking in a lot of money now. Our country, they pay that big, beautiful tariff. It goes right into rebuilding new ships. We've been taken advantage of by the world. That's not going to be happening anymore. You see what's going on. So we're building that modern fleet manned by the greatest sailors anywhere in the world. We're sharpening the fighting edge of everything from marine infantry squads to combat ships to deliver maximum lethal force. The enemy has to know we have that. And we are recommitting to this fundamental truth. We are a maritime nation. True. And being a maritime nation, we're surrounded by sea. We must always dominate that sea. We will always dominate the oceans. We are showing what we can achieve when natural American confidence is backed by unrivaled American power and unquestioned American resolve. Also, there's another word that's never used, and I'll use it today. It's called talent. We have talent, and a lot of other people don't, and a lot of other countries don't. We have great talent, and I've seen it. In other words, we are showing what is possible when America starts acting like its sailors and its Marines. Our nation cannot be strong without the heroes whose hearts stir the words don't give up the ship. Very famous phrase. We even use it in business. Things are going bad. You say, don't give up the ship. Keep fighting. Don't give up the ship. But it's really, you guys started it. Our country cannot prevail without those who rally to Admiral Farragut's famous cry, you know it well. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Boom. <laughs> Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. You hail from every background, and you come from every walk of life. But each of you is formed by the same defining choice to answer the call. You all share the same heart, the same blood, and swear by the same motto, not for self, but country. Great motto. With us today are living symbols of that long and unbroken chain of American patriots, members of the Naval Academy, class of 1968. That's great. Stand up, please. Please. Exactly 50 years ago, they were in your shoes. They embarked into service, and they made America very proud. To everyone in the class of 68, we thank you and we salute you. Like those who came before them, today's graduates will serve America through times of triumph and some hours of peril. There will be hours of peril. You will face new challenges, even challenges that you can't envision. But you'll find new solutions that nobody can even imagine. Among your ranks, is the next Chester Nimitz, the next Grace 
Harper, the next John Lejeune. Future generations will talk about you. They will tell your stories, speak of your courage, and someone many years from now will be standing right here in my position, paying tribute to your great service. It will happen because you already know the keys to success. You know that as long as we are proud of who we are and what we are fighting for, we will not fail. We can not fail. We will always succeed, always. As long as we are united with the same mission, the same purpose, the same patriotic heart, we will win. Because we are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. Together we struggle, together we strive, together we pray, and together we triumph as citizens, as patriots, as Americans. We stand on the shoulders of heroes who gave their sweat, their blood, their tears, and their very lives for this great country of ours. This is our heritage. This is our home. And this is our pledge. We are all in for America like never before. We are all in for our great country. So to the Naval Academy of the class of 2018, I say a number of things. Number one, I say that I was given an option. I could make this commencement address, which is a great honor for me, and immediately leave and wave goodbye. Or I could stay and shake hands with just the top 100. Or I could stay for hours and shake hands with 1,100 and something. What should I do? What should I do? I'll stay, I'll stay. I'll stay. But to the class of 2018, I do say strive for excellence, live for adventure, think big, dream bigger, push further, sail faster, fly higher, and never, ever stop reaching for greatness. Never stop reaching for the stars. You know you are up to the task. You are among the finest people anywhere in the world, the smartest, the strongest. You know you will make us proud. We know that glory will be yours because you are winners, you are warriors, you are fighters, you are champions, and you will lead us only to victory. Good luck. May God be with you. God bless America. And anchors away. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Academic Dean and Provost of the United States Naval Academy, Dr. Andrew T. Phillips.
successfully completing the requirements and demands of a Naval Academy education is no small task. From I-Day to today, it's a steady dose of challenge, ranging from academic to athletic to leadership and character development. I have no doubt that each of you has been challenged, perhaps in ways that you never thought you would or to levels that you never thought you could achieve. But you did, and we congratulate each of you for doing so. To the families and friends of these soon-to-be Naval Academy graduates, these soon-to-be ensigns and second lieutenants, and to the faculty and staff here today as well, I would like to thank you and congratulate you as well. The rare graduate is the one who never needed the support of family and friends and of faculty mentors. These graduates, like the tens of thousands before them, have depended on your support and encouragement. And you were there for them when they needed it most. I know you are proud of their success, and we are most grateful to you for your role in that success. Candidates, please rise. Admiral Carter, on behalf of the faculty of the United States Naval Academy, I present these candidates for the baccalaureate degree and recommend that this degree be conferred upon them. Class of 2018, as you have successfully completed your course of study at the United States Naval Academy and have been recommended by the Academic Board as Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States, I confer upon each of you the baccalaureate degree with all rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. The Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Glenn Walters, United States Marine Corps, will administer the oath of office to those being commissioned to the United States Marine Corps. General Walters, I present 236 midshipmen of the graduating class to be commissioned in the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah, how do you like our blue blouses so far? The success of the Marine Corps is determined by the quality of the women and men that wear the Eagle Globe and Anchor. The quality, that quality is a bedrock on which we make our Marines, win our nation's battles, and return quality citizens to our society. Today we are here to commission 236 second lieutenants for service as officers of Marines. Your accomplishments and your willingness to serve our great nation speak to the quality of your character and to the excellence of this great institution that shaped you and the communities and families that supported you. It is an exciting time for the Navy and Marine Corps team. Marines, as you affirm your oath, we pass the torch to you. It is now your time to lead and shape the Marines of today and of tomorrow. You will be busy. You will have fun. That's an order. You will be dedicated to your Marines, and as you prepare them for the missions, that you will execute together as a team in every climb and place. Our nation and our Marines are ready for you to lead them. Graduates to be commissioned in the United States Marine Corps, rise. Raise your right hand. Having been appointed as a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps to rank as such from the 25th of May, 2018, do you hereby accept such appointment and do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same? 
that you will take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which you're about to enter, so help you God. Congratulations, Marines! Lieutenants, sit down. <laughs> the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John Richardson, United States Navy, will administer the oath of office to those being commissioned in the United States Navy. Admiral Richardson, I present 784 midshipmen of the graduating class for commissions in the United States Navy. Thank you, Captain. Class of 2018, you're about to take an oath. Congratulations to all the second lieutenants who just took that oath. This oath will bind you. It serves as a seal, a seal with all those who have gone before you for our 242-year history. It also seals you to your destiny that the President spoke so eloquently about. You will be tested. You will be tested during your career. But your preparation here and the strength that you gain from the words of this oath, the legacy that you inherit from those who have gone before you, you will face that test and you will make us proud. Graduates, to be commissioned in the United States Navy, rise. Raise your right hand and signify your adherence to this oath by saying, I do. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy to rank from 25 May 2018, do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which you are about to enter. So help you God. Ensigns, welcome to the fleet. You make us amazingly proud, ensigns of the class of 2018 seats. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will graduate 1,042 men and women who have met the many challenges of four years at the Naval Academy. In addition to those you just saw commissioned into the Navy and the Marine Corps, the class of 2018 also includes 11 graduates from 10 nations around the world. At this time, we invite these international graduating midshipmen to stand when their name is called, along with members of their national delegation who are in attendance today. These graduates, whose national flags are flying above the memorial arches at the north end of the stadium, will return to their countries 
and serve with distinction in their armed forces or enter other government service. From the Kingdom of Cambodia, Say Ray Mankul Ong. From the Republic of Cameroon, Norbert Buba. From the Republic of Cameroon, Landry M. Tomba. From Georgia, Pata Gujajiani. From the Republic of Korea, Yunbi Ra. From the United Mexican States, Diana Vazquez Ariola. From Montenegro, Ayan Salman. From the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Timothy Abuniki. From the Republic of Senegal, Malik Ba. From Taiwan, Chiolin Hu. And from the United Arab Emirates, Ibrahim Isa bin Ali Al Taniji. Thank you. Seats. Today's graduates join the more than 84,000 men and women who have graduated from the Naval Academy since its founding in 1845. As part of our graduation ceremony today, members of the Naval Academy class that preceded this year's graduates by 50 years will honor this a continuing chain of Naval Academy graduates by presenting engraved ensign and second lieutenant uniform devices to the class of 2018. Several members of the class of 1968 are listed in your program and are here today to participate in this special recognition of Naval Academy graduates' contributions across the decades. Please join me in recognizing and applauding these distinguished graduates. <laughs> Finally, before we begin introductions of individual graduates, I should remind you of an important Naval Academy tradition. The parents and friends of each graduate are invited to stand when that graduate's name is called. In that way, we can recognize your contribution to the achievement of these fine young men and women. The president will, dis will present diplomas to those individuals graduating with distinction. Those members of the class of 2018 graduating with distinction, please rise. Ensign Christopher G. Cantillo stands first in the class. Gregory E. Heyer. Nathan R. Burmel. Michael D. Walker. John J. Gaynor, Jr. Carter B. Byrne. David J. Lidka III. Benjamin R. Dunphy. Samuel M. Haber. William R. Stom. Kurt M. Zepeda. Rachel L. Fortner. Jennifer R. Hedgecoff. Eli W. Wood.
Timothy R. Nasky. Corey J. Wilding. Grant P. Zero. Zachary G. Skirpan. Megan N. Hegarty. J. Joseph Bruff III. Justin J. H. Park. Nicholas N. Bakalinski. Coleman E. Truitt. Thomas F. Guinan, Jr. Carter B. Prescott. Trevor K. Karn. Coleman E. Engstrom. Nicholas P. Stovall Kurtz. Jacob R. Mayo. Zachary A. Lewis. Thomas L. Savage. Nicholas A. Costa. Sarah T. Jenkins. Molly R. Kunstler. Andrew J. Thomas. John P. Kornack. Nicholas J. Dunnakey. John P. Morrison. Caleb T. Robertson. Thomas W. Sarant. Bennett A. Marston. Armando A. Rivera. Andrew J.J. J. Sumeda. William B. Allred. Dakota J. Allen. Grant D. Thornton. Matthew A. Baugh. Nolan T. Brandon. Parker T. Novakovic. Benjamin W. Jackson. Cole M. Oliver. Emma M. Cheshire. Aaron S. Wickard. William D. Gompertz. Austin H. Schober. Michael B. Terrio. Spencer J. Urjevic. Robert C. Thyberg II. John G. Treza. Scott T. Simons. 
Matthew I. Goodpastor. Thomas E. Stone. Brianna M. Kaufman. Andrew J. Sikora. Michael C. McKinney. Benjamin C. Barsam. Michael J. Kelly. Stephanie L. Murphy. Fernando R. Valle Enriquez. Theodore R. Johnson. Benjamin R. Anderson. Chandler J. Vercher. Brittany F. Dowling. Peter W. Hodap. Sarah L. Peelman. Connor E. Linarts. Matthew P. Vogel. Christian D. Montgomery. Zachary D. Hudgens. Connor A. McGuire. Zachary T. Scholes. Kara S. Rathmel. Carl C. Colin. Bo James Cisneros. Thomas A. Krasnishin. Aaron P. Fowler. Raymond K. Chang. Connor J. Dittmar. Casey R. O. Densmore. Eli A. Carlson. Matthew N. Crispell. Aaron A. Colton. Dylan R. Pannell. Miranda L. Cosmides. Stephen D. Bourne. Samuel Z. Valley. Malia L. K. Meditz. Michael T. Bush. Balin C. Smith. Margaret M. Panna. John A. Bantle. Noah B. Becker. Kyle C. Mathis Orr. Yunbi Ra.
the President of the United States, the Under Secretary of the Navy, the Chief of Naval Operations, the Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, the Superintendent, and the Commandant of Midshipmen will now present diplomas to members of the graduating class individually by company. Odd-numbered companies will receive their diplomas from my left and even-numbered companies from my right. From the first company, Alessandra D. Altruda. From the second company, Sean E. Anderson, Jr. Matthew D. Baker. Olivia N. Bear. Jared J. Castillo. Patrick J. Bolton II. Andrew K. Chang. Jacob L. Brush. Maxwell A. Cherry. A. B. Bustamante. Matthew B. Kreider. Alyssa K. Chang. Julie J. Danoshka. Andrew C. Kraft. Noreen May S. Domingo. Daniel E. Fulton. Daniel M. Dwyer. John P. Garza. Natalie L. John Japunyan. Devin T. Graves. Hugh M. Ernsbeck. Alexander J. Hassan. Teresa M. Erbach. Michelle S. Helbig. Kevin A. Friedman. Charlene R. Kearns. Jeremy G. Garcia. Michael B. Kennedy. Michael J. Germano. Marcel F. LaPlante. Colin R. Hackbarth. Samuel H. Ledesma. Devin D. Harris. Chad Llewellyn. Quinn T. Harrison. Latuan A. Mack. Eric L. Hess. Catherine S. McCarthy. Matthew G. Hogue. Thomas R. Moore. Andrew M. Julius. Daniel D. No. Elizabeth G. Kim. Trenton M. Miller. Scott T. Meyer. Nathan S. Olaya. Megan L. McDonough. Adam R. Oster. Marina C. Munster. Casey M. Reeves. Norbert Booba. Austin D. Rose. Jackson S. Parrish. Christina M. Roberts. Timothy J. Reagan. Colin T. Rogers. Andrew J. Shuda. Aaron M. Seals. J. 
Jacob A. Wolf. Joseph C. Chevelle. From the third company, Andrew J. On. Evan J. Shawcross. Alexander J. Ashley. Aiden J. Switzer. Danielle N. Benoit. Trinity T. Taylor. John E. Britt. Francesca A. Treglia. Brittany M. Berg. Caitlin M. Vernon. Jonathan Castaneda. Abigail R. White. Jason K. Clark. Andrew J. Weisgarber. Quinn R. Dirks. From the fourth company, David A. Alisea. Kara M. Edwards. Jordan T. Baker. Madeline Spar. Daniel Elijah Fiddleston. Jacob X. Fernandez. Megan C. Brophy. Erica M. Hoffman. Colin D. Butler. Carly G. Knapp. Keely L. Chan. Daniel W. Lindauer. Christine T. Chor. Bryce C. McClelland. Young H. Choi. Kyle. Brandon T. Cologne. Jade Ann E. Miller. Kylie J. Dates. Gerard A. Mirville. Luke E. Dodds. Joseph T. Monahan the Fourth. Joshua Gatz. Joseph F. Mullen. Aaliyah R. Gordon. Sean Park. Joshua A. Hanna. Sean R. Richards. Eliza P. Harris. Jordan S. Richardson. Thomas A. Henches. Ricardo J. Rosario Hoover. Connor E. Keating. Ryan A. Savage. Gray S. Leland. Matthew R. Eloise S. Leas. Randy Sosa. Kenneth W. Levin. Sean W. Spencer. Robert S. Lindsay. Corey Ann Sullivan. Nolan Foster Linville. Abby L. Taylor. Benjamin Joshua Machen. Nicole M. Thatcher. 
Matthew W. McKee. Michelle L. Tran. Connor O. McNerney. Sean F. Trent. Stephen C. Miller, Jr. Clay S. Burkow. Adam P. Montgomery. From the Fifth Company. Zachary K. Anderson. Miguel A. Perez. Austin J. Armand. Daniela Pimentel. Omar S. Bailey. Riley J. Smith. Betty A. Ballard. Frederick B. Stanford. Joseph C. Barrett. Stephen L. Steckler. Wyatt J. Berg. Orion S. Bedral. David W. Christie, Jr. Gerhard A. Bonzermuller. Gabriel J. Collison. From the Sixth Company, June Beck. Jackson Scott Cotney. Garrett C. Beard. Tara B. Dotzauer. Todd M. Bethay, Jr. John Paul Fosher II. Veronica M. Cartaya. Carl P. Flynn. Bridget A. TV. Augusta L. Gary. Jared S. Downey. Gabriel T. Gaspar. Kenneth L. Edmund II. Mitchell T. Gokenauer. Thomas M. Fricky. Joshua D. Gray. Louis B. Gilpin, Jr. Lee Robert H. Griffin. Mark R. Glazer. Brandon R. Corey. Tegan K. Grundy. Joseph J. Kim. Philip G. Hanson. Thomas E. Lambert. Jason G. Harvey. Elizabeth L. Lee. Connor R. Hickey. Nicholas P. Mabry. Christopher D. Johnson. 